Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with your weekly stock market update, 9 a.m. Eastern every Monday morning with the stocks to watch and the stock market news you need to see. And Nation, good news is bad once again, with a strong jobs market sending stocks lower on Friday. But I'm about to show you data that proves we're coming into a bull market for stocks, the likes of which we haven't seen in more than 20 years. In fact, $42 trillion could be coming into the market. That's trillion with a T boosting stocks, and I'm going to reveal the seven stocks to watch into that trend. Stick around and we'll do our Monday market update with the stocks to buy this week, along with some important news updates with Nvidia, Tesla, and Chipotle. First though, options investing is booming, with the Options Clearing Council reporting total daily volume more than doubled last year. But for many investors, options are still like a foreign language. In fact, many of the beginning options investors out there are losing a lot of money. Researchers from the London School of Business studied options investments by retail investors between November 2019 to June 2022 and found the group lost $1.14 billion on total trades and an additional $4 billion in hidden trading costs. That's why I'm relaunching my ultimate options course for all 29 option strategies. I'll take you step by step into 29 strategies, including one that's going to make your money back fast in a losing stock. Whether you've never invested in options or already know the basics, this course is going to teach you everything you need to know about options to increase your returns, lower your risk of a crash, and even generate income every month. The course also comes with a one of a kind strategy finder to help you find the right option strategy and an options calculator to show you exactly what to expect. Right now, I'm launching the course at a 38% discount. Save $150 off, but only for the next three days. You're going to get all the basics you need to get started, the strategy finder to make sure you're using the best strategy, the options calculator to show you exactly how much you can make, walkthroughs on all 29 strategies, and a 14-day money-back guarantee. That $150 launch discount is only available with the coupon code in the link I'll leave in the description, so check that out or just scan the QR code here. Back to our main topic though, and investors were actually hoping last Friday's jobs report would be a bad report. Expectations were for the US to have created just 190,000 jobs last month. Once again, the strong labor market surprised on the upside, with 272,000 jobs created, huge job gains in healthcare, government, and leisure sectors. Now that good news was initially taken as a bad sign for stocks, with the S&P 500 falling as much as a third of a percent at the open. But folks, if you zoom out to the big picture and understand what I'm about to show you, this good news is bad mentality and the constant ups and downs in stocks could be hiding the fact that we could be coming into the beginning of the best bull market in more than 30 years as stock prices continue to rise through this year and then boom over the next few. In fact, this bull market could dwarf the stock surge we saw back in the 90s, with stocks in the NASDAQ up more than 600% in the last five years of that decade. That is a 45% return every year for five years. But first, I want to show you why that good news is bad right now, and then I'm going to explain the $42 trillion boom coming for the market and the stocks to watch for it. Up to Friday, recent data had showed that the economy was slowing down, and that meant the Fed could return to its lower interest rates towards the end of this year. The CME FedWatch rate tool, a market-based prediction of what the Fed is going to do at its upcoming meetings, had the odds of a rate cut by September at 68%, better than 2 and 3 that the Fed would start cutting rates by that meeting. Of course, the Fed raises interest rates to slow down inflation, but with the economy looking weaker, it was expected to come to the rescue once again, cut rates, and spur the economic growth, as well as stocks. But then that strong jobs report Friday contrasted the slowing economy story, and now a rate cut in September is no better than 50-50 odds. And of course, we already know that those lower interest rates, the Fed cuts, means lower borrowing costs for consumers, homeowners, and businesses. I'm going to show you next how it could also unlock trillions of dollars for stocks, though. But that good news on the economy means that rates will be higher for longer, and that's why stocks initially sold off on that news. But then here's why I think we're in the best of both worlds. Okay, what are we really looking at here? And the question is key to why I think even with the higher rates, we're still going to see good stock returns until we see great returns coming up. A strong jobs market, people with jobs and spending money, that's good for stocks. Even if we don't get that massive boost from lower rates that we're going to see later, we still get those good earnings growth and rising stock prices. Now we see in the most recent FactSet earnings insight, while earnings growth was just 5.9% in the first quarter from the year ago, it is set to almost double the 9.2% growth in this quarter. Now ultimately, stock prices are an ownership of those earnings, folks, so that is a great sign for investors. 
It's why I say even if we have to put off that massive bull market that is coming for stocks because a strong economy keeps those rates higher, stocks are still going to do really well. Now for the big show though, the really big show. Analysis last week by Ben Carlson, a portfolio manager over at Ritholtz, opened my eyes to the massive wave of what's going to amount to a stock market stimulus coming. First off, thanks to the pandemic housing boom, Americans have $32 trillion in home equity, tens of trillions of dollars in that difference between what they owe on their loans and their home's value. That is an increase of $12 trillion just in the last five years. Now, homeowners have always used their house value as a piggy bank, and research shows a lot of that money finds its way into stocks. But the problem right now is nobody is tapping that value. Nobody is breaking open their piggy bank because only the guy in the tinfoil hat would refinance from a 3% rate into a 7% mortgage. You see here, the value of home equity lines of credit, those HELOC loans at commercial banks, has plunged over the last five years from $340 billion to just $255 billion, even as the value of homeowners' equity has surged $12 trillion. But to immortalize the great Billy Mays, wait, there's more. Savers now have more than $6.3 trillion in money market funds, more than double the amount five years ago. Those 5% risk-free money market rates are attractive, and I've held some of my own money in CDs over the past few years. And here, a chart that blew my mind and shows you how much money is just sloshing around in the system. Americans have nearly $4 trillion in checking accounts, a 4x increase, up $3 trillion over the last five years. This money is earning little or no interest in checking accounts, just sitting there. Now, okay, before I get a thousand comments on how consumers are hurting, how nobody has any money, and inflation is eating their soul, this money isn't evenly distributed. Okay, that $32 trillion in home equity, the $6 trillion in money markets, the $4 trillion in checking accounts, it doesn't mean every single person has lots of money but it is there. That is $42 trillion in spending power, an increase of $18 trillion just in the last five years. And what happens when interest rates do start to fall? It might not happen this year, but it will happen. What happens when rates fall on money market accounts and people move their money or when they just get tired of earning nothing on a checking account? What happens when mortgage rates come down and people start tapping that piggy bank? Not only is that money going to flood into stocks, but it's also going to be spent on consumer goods. On a multiplier effect, it's going to cause corporate earnings to jump and valuation multiples are going to rise even further as that wave of money just pushes the economy and stock prices higher. I know that's a long explanation and more than a few of you out there are screaming, get on with it already. Just show me the stocks to buy. But I want you to understand this, folks. This is going to drive the entire stock market. So you don't want to be too bearish. And this buy the dip strategy should do very well over the next couple of years, buying whenever the market takes back 3 or 5% every once in a while. But then there are stocks and parts of the market that will outperform. So I want to highlight those where that is, the stocks to buy and the sectors I'm watching. The first up is just a broad bet on tech stocks, but not the more popular NASDAQ 100 index, the QQQ Trust. For following the long-term tech trend, I prefer the iShares Expanded Tech Sector ETF, the IGM. That's because while the QQQ may look like a fund of tech stocks, and it's certainly more tech-focused than the Dow or the S&P 500 index, Look closer and you see a lot of decidedly non-tech companies. The fund holds the 100 largest non-financial companies on the NASDAQ, which also includes companies like Costco, PepsiCo, T-Mobile, and Amgen. The IGM, though, is 283 of the techiest of tech stocks across hardware, software, internet, and interactive media. And now why focus on tech stocks as part of this broader bull market theme? Well, because we're in the era of technology, folks. From AI to Internet of Things, all the major growth themes are in tech, and you need a part of that in your portfolio. Tech is now more than 30% of the broader S&P 500 stock index, so not only will that boom drive corporate earnings, but those investor dollars are, are going to be going into tech, a lot of it going into tech, driving up stock prices as well. Also within that tech space, but more focused here. I'm investing heavily in cybersecurity stocks, including Zscaler, ticker ZS, and much larger CrowdStrike Holdings, ticker CRWD. This is one of my favorite growth trends over the next decade, with a 20-fold increase in the number of malicious programs since 2014. That's lifted cybersecurity budgets to over 10% of overall tech budgets from just 8.6% three years ago, and the advent of AI could bring another wave of threats, 
boosting the need for protection. So not only could we see that massive tailwind of investable assets chasing stocks in those growth themes like cybersecurity, but just the universal force of demand that's going to drive revenue higher for these companies. CrowdStrike Holdings, ticker CRWD, is one of the largest cybersecurity companies with an $85 billion market cap and really interesting threat intelligence capability. And it's leading here in that software's ability to work on a multi-tenant basis across many endpoints, including Internet of Things appliances. Zscaler's competitive advantage is taking market share from the legacy cybersecurity providers built on that hardware delivery. The company has grown sales by 181% over the last three years, much of it those large customer orders of a million plus, the kind of customer revenue the company can count on every single year. Both of those companies reported forecast beating earnings for the first quarter and saw their shares rise on that news. Now that's something I always look for, even for those long-term stocks to buy, that, that near-term momentum that shows management is doing what it needs to be done to impress the market and keep investors buying. Now, of course, none of you in the Bowtie Nation are going to be surprised with this one. SoFi Technologies, ticker SOFI, which has been one of my favorite fintech stocks since late 2022. And while the stock has come down from its $12 peak over the last year, SoFi is still growing into a major bank, with management expecting to add as much as a billion dollars in tangible book value this year, along with positive net income. SoFi was one of the few banks to grow its deposits and members through the banking crisis over the last two years booking 44% annualized member growth to 8 million members and growing revenue by a 26% annual pace in the first quarter. On a forecast of $6.25 book value per share this year, the stock is back in value territory at $7 each, or about 1.1 times book. That compares to the spikes in the share price, where we've seen the price to book jump as high as 1.5 to 1.8 times value. A little more directly relevant to the idea that consumer flush with cash is going to be stocks in the consumer discretionary sector. Here you can use the sector tracker on sectorspiders.com to see the largest U.S. companies in that space, like Amazon, Tesla, Home Depot, and McDonald's. And a broad investment across this idea might be the Select Sector Spider ETF, the XLY, which holds all 52 companies in the sector, the 52 largest consumer discretionary companies in the United States. It's a diversified investment across apparel, hotel, restaurant, automobiles, everything people buy. More focused and going where the growth is would be $1.9 trillion Amazon, ticker AMZN. I like Amazon here because it's set to benefit not just from that investable assets theme that we're talking about here, but so many of the growth trends that we're watching like cloud services, AI, and e-commerce. It's one of the few Magnificent 7 stocks that I think is still a good value with a lot of upside potential. Also in that consumer spending e-commerce theme is Shopify, ticker SHOP, which disappointed investors with its full year outlook, but is offering a buy the dip opportunity. Whereas Amazon dominates e-commerce with its single site model, Shopify is the backbone of the e-commerce world for separate businesses. Shopify is run by 27%, more than one in four of the top 1 million e-commerce sites by traffic. That market share demonstrates a competitive advantage in features and usability. It's going to continue to grow its revenue and benefit from this consumer spending surge that we're expecting. On to the stocks I'm watching this week, NVIDIA Corporation, ticker NVDA, starts trading at its split-adjusted price on Monday, the X date for its 50 to 1 stock split. Now that means for every one share of NVIDIA you owned on Friday, you're now going to have 50 shares in your account. It really doesn't change the overall value of your shares or the company, though. At Friday's price of about $1,211 per share, stock is going to be around 150th that, or about $24 on Monday. It also doesn't change the growth theme of the company though either, dominating the industry for AI chips. The lower share price could allow more investors to buy shares, no longer having to save up that $1,000 to buy a single share. More importantly though, for income investors, it also opens up the possibility of using option strategies, like the covered call to cash flow this stock. Since option contracts trade in blocks of 100 shares, that pre-split, you would have needed to own more than $120,000 NVIDIA to sell a covered call against it and collect what amounts to a 6% monthly dividend. That's out of the question for most investors, but now with this much lower stock price, you can be able to buy 100 shares for just over $2,400 and sell a call option against that. Now, I'm preparing a video detailing this strategy, or just check out that options investing course if you're even thinking about using options. Tesla shareholders, ticker TSLA, are going to vote on June 13th on whether to grant Elon Musk a $56 billion pay package and boost his ownership of the company from 13 to 22%. The vote is on a 2018 pay package voided after a Delaware court ruled this year that the board of directors didn't act in shareholders' best interest and 
barely negotiated at all when they agreed to it back then. Now, some shareholders have come out against the pay package, including voting advisors ISS, but the deal is likely to be, have enough support to, for backers to pass. The board of directors is very Musk-friendly here, and major shareholders like billionaire Ron Barron have come out in favor of the award. But legally, I think Musk has a right to that money. The package of stock and options was approved by shareholders in 2018 when the company was valued at just $53 billion. At the time, nobody dreamed the company would be worth more, more than 10 times that amount by now, and the pay package seemed a credible reflection of Musk's leadership. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Should Musk get his $56 billion payday? Chipotle Mexican Grill, ticker CMG, also has a stock split coming up and could see some investor interest in the weeks leading up to it. CMG is also going to split its stock 50 to 1 on June 26th, which means if it was to happen now, it would take the shares from $3,200 to $64 each. Again, it really doesn't change the overall worth or value of your investment, but there are factors here that could drive up the price. Chipotle has always been a tough call for me, though. The, the fast, casual food industry runs on razor-thin profitability margins, made even thinner by wage inflation and worker shortage lately, and it's not exactly a growth industry. Against this, though, CMG trades at nosebleed valuations of 68 times on a price-to-earnings basis versus, versus shares of McDonald's trading at just 22 times their earnings. Now, on the other hand, Chipotle has always been able to grow faster, and the returns have been outstanding here, with a 304% return over the past five years. Showing you the bigger picture here with the SectorSpiders.com sector tracker, just five of the 11 stock sectors closed higher last week, but more surprising here, more striking, was the disparity between the positive and negative sectors. Four of the six sectors that fell did so by a percent or more, utilities, energy, materials, and industrials. Then four of the five sectors that rose did so by a percent or more, technology, communication services, consumer discretionary, and healthcare. Now, it's a particularly strong confirmation of strength and weakness in the market that goes beyond just one week, and investors should use this as a positioning tool over the next few months. Get your $150 discount with that special relaunch offer on the Ultimate Options course, 29 Options Strategies, the Strategy Finder tool, and Options Calculator so you know exactly how much money you can make. Or click on the video to the right for the five stocks that could be the next NVIDIA. Five stocks to buy that NVIDIA is buying right now. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.